for this experience and all my experiences. I just want to thank God for uh, blessing me for this award. I have to thank God for just this experience and for my family and my friends and for my boyfriend that's here with me tonight. Now, first off, I want to thank God because that's who I look up to. He's graced my life with opportunities that I know are not of my hand or any other human hand. No, I want to thank God. Um, I know none of this is possible. I'm up here to say thank you to God for giving me this ability, for blessing me, for shaping me, for chastising me, for teaching me, for punishing me, for allowing me to be a vessel and touch people around the world. I would not be here with the ease and grace I have in my heart without my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you. God, I love you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God, for putting me through what you put me through, but I'm here and I'm happy. <laughs> I just want to say thank you so much not only to God, but to Jesus. First and foremost, man, thank you to the man above. Uh, without his blessing, without his honor, I wouldn't be standing here today, so thank him. Uh, I'm very, very blessed. Glory be to God. I claim this victory in the name of the Lord. I want to thank God for my mother and my father who've supported me since I was young. I wouldn't be here without him. He's really blessed me. He's put me in this position, so I want to say thank you so much. And God. God who believes us in, in us all and uh, who's given me this moment in this lifetime that I will hopefully carry to the end of my lifetime into the next lifetime. You know, first and foremost, you know, I got to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I just want to thank Jesus for letting me be a part of this, that he's put a, a voice in my throat. For everybody who's a writer, whoever's involved in all this, I just think it's such a gift. I want to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. In the power of Jesus, I won this in Germany tonight. I want to thank God. I always do that when I'm up on a big platform in front of a bunch of young faces. I say, I love God. That's my thing. I love him. And you should too. And of course, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I thank you, my King, for saving me. My Lord, my Savior, my rock, my salvation, give me the glory tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. I want to thank Jesus Christ. You know, first and foremost, I have to thank my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for blessing me with the talents to play this game. He has shown me that uh, it's a scientific fact that gratitude reciprocates. Um, in the words of the late Charlie Lawton, who said, when you got God, you got a friend, and that friend is you. I want to thank God for my team. I know people think that independence means you do it by yourself, but independence means freedom. I do it with these folks right here. Glory be to God. I claim the victory in the name of the Lord. Let's go. Praise the Lord. Can I hear somebody say a loud hallelujah in the house this evening? Well, this afternoon it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome one and all. You are most welcome to this edition of our Yes Summit. We are so happy to see all of who are joining us today. We are super happy to have everyone log on. Thank you very much for the support. Thank you for being here. And I'm just so grateful to, to God for all of you. In, uh, for what he has been doing in our lives. You know, it has been a few months since we have seen each other, but we are here again. And it is, of course, all because of the grace of God. You are most welcome. And I want us to be as active as we possibly can. I want us to be as involved as we possibly can, because it's not a lecture today. Amen. We are going to be talking to each other and we're going to be learning from each other. And we're just going to be making God big on this platform today as we say, yes. The theme for this seminar is just say yes. And I hope all of us have come with our yeses ready because we are going to be asking to shout it from time to time. We're going to be asking you to jump in as much as you possibly can to reaffirm the word of God in our lives. And whatever God is doing in this season, we're looking forward to having him do it with us, not without us. We want to be as involved as possible 
in this season of yes amen and if you have your friends who are not here i wanted to look around if you know that there are some people who need to be here right now and they're not here i want you to send them a quick message and to tell them hey we have started you need to jump on to yes to right now we have our daddy in the lord pastor abraham pastor you're welcome sir thank you very much for being here we have our wonderful conveners or planners or organizers and or supporters, and we have the spirit of God, most importantly, here with us. And we just want to pause right now to say a quick word of prayer. Father, we thank you very much, mighty God, for this that you have given unto us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the anointing to do great things in your name. Thank you for your people who are connecting from far and wide. Thank you, mighty God, that you continue to pour out your grace upon us, that you continue to show us mercy, that you have seen it fit to allow us to live to see this moment, to celebrate this Yes To seminar, this 13th day of November 2021. We are just about running up the year, mighty God, but we want to finish great. And we ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, just to be present, just to take your seat on the throne of the hearts of everyone here, to allow us mighty God to shut out every distraction that whatever it is that you have brought mighty God let there be an exchange of gifts we have come to give you praise as we know that you are in the midst to give unto your children those things that we need father we just lift you up and our answer is yes we say our soul says yes our whole minds our bodies or might say yes to you mighty God and I pray that everything from start to finish in this program will bring you glory in Jesus name we have prayed is that an amen from somebody? Amen. Yes, an amen. 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 I was kind of wondering, you know, because, you know, some people look like they don't want to talk to me today, but that's okay. I'll have you talking by the end or even by the midsection of this uh, seminar today. And welcome, one and all. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I see people are flowing in. You are welcome, everyone. I see Deji, you are welcome, Dr. Sam. Hello, sir, you are welcome. Pastor Bosola Martins. Uh, Dr. Nibori, you're welcome. Bolaji, Boluati Fe, Esther Grace, Hervé, you are welcome. Nike and Bengma Adeni, you're welcome, sir. And Ma, you are welcome. Pastor David Adelo, and everyone who is jumping on right now, you are welcome the lord bless you as you come expecting a great thing from this yes seminar today amen all right so what i want us to do right now as we jump into just getting our feelers out there to see you know what's going on with each and everyone and to see how we have been keeping in this time i want everyone to drop in the chat right now are you out and about? And where's the first place that you went to when you emerged from lockdown? Wherever you are, I know that you must have been affected somehow by this whole COVID situation. So I want you to tell me, where's the first place that you went when you emerged from lockdown? And be honest, if it's a grocery store, tell me. If it is to go get your nails done, I want to know. If it is to go eat your favorite hamburger, I want to know. Drop it in the chat right now. What is the first place? Hervey says that he went to the barber. Fantastic. Yes, I see some of our men looking like we're crawling out of a cave, you know, all bushy and full of hair and stuff. And oh my goodness, some of us are really in need of a barber. Herbie, you went to the barber. RCCG PNG says school. Okay, thank you. Everyone else, please keep it coming. Where's the first place that you went to? Lika says went to school for one day. One day, Lika. What about the rest of the day? What happened after that? Where did the rest of us go? Study leave. Ah, okay. Got it. Got it. Pastor Hastrup, sir, where did you go the first time that you came out of lockdown? Do you remember? Come on, people. Tell me. When you got out of lockdown, what's the first thing that you did? What's the first place that you went to? Yes, Daddy, go ahead. Me? Yes. What did you okay. do? What was the question? What's the, what's the first place that you went to after you came out of lockdown? After the restrictions were lifted, what's the first place that you went to? After I left London? Yes. Lockdown. Oh, lockdown. Oh, yes. I went to my office in the church. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Because I've been away from there for some time. <laughs> I probably could have guessed that one. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
<laughs> Hallelujah. We thank the Lord. And so we are here and we are just getting ready to jump into the meat of the matter. We have our speakers lined up and we have everybody who is ready to impart what the Lord has given unto them into our lives. Amen. And so right now, I just want to make welcome our daddy in the Lord, our own beloved Pastor Abraham Hastrop. He is the pastor in charge of the Australia Pacific continent, this entire region, a man with a great vision, the convener of the Yes Seminar, who has given us the permission to run with what the Lord has placed on his heart. And we are here because of God's grace in him and through him that is extending throughout this region. And I want everyone to put your virtual hands together wherever you are right now. Make the man of God welcome. The Lord is here with us and we are happy. We are grateful to have our daddy in the Lord with us this afternoon. Sir, Pastor Abraham Hastrop, you are welcome, sir. Please take it away to give your welcome. Uh, God bless you, Brad Charles. I welcome everybody to this edition of Just the uh, Just Program. In Jesus' name, it's a privilege to be alive and to gather together this morning. As the my brother was introducing, something just struck me. Your music, Pastor. Pastor Hassel, your, your music. Could you please unmute? <laughs> yes, there you go. Thank okay. You. Great. Now, I said when Brachas was just talking, something struck me. And that thing is that all that we need as youth in life is to just say yes to Jesus. The moment you say yes to Jesus, every other thing will ultimately say yes to you. When you say yes to Jesus, you are submitting to his perfect will for your life, and every other thing will bow to you. That has been my testimony in the last 40 years, and it's going to be your testimony also in Jesus' name. I welcome every one of us to this edition of our YES program, the Youth Empowerment Summit. This is our second outing, and I want to thank God for what he did on 31st July when we had the maiden edition of Yes, I want to specially thank our brother, the special assistant to the continent of Asia, Dr. Neyu Borire, and his great team in the Continental Youth Council for all the great things God has been using you to do. You have been marvelous, and God will increase you in wisdom and strength in Jesus' name. I want to also thank all our friends, all our senior friends, you know, who have been handling the mentoring program. I uh, attended some of the sessions. And I want to thank God for the great things God used you to do, all the great things have deposited in our lives. I pray that when those things begin to bless and manifest, you will not be found wanting your own seed will benefit from it in the name of Jesus Christ. So I want to thank God for your lives and I pray that he will multiply his graces upon all of you in Jesus' name. Today is going to be very awesome by God's grace. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21, Proverbs 19, 21, the Bible says there are many devices in that of a man, but nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. That is what is happening today concerning yes to. The counsel of the Lord is standing and is going to stand in your own life too in Jesus' name. God has given us a very big vessel in his hand, if I can use that word, that is going to use to bless us today. And his name, of course, is Pastor Damilola Ulutoyibo. He's a pastor of, you know, the church in Lagos, the King's Church. My God's case, Dr. Bolire will be doing, you know, introduction, proper introduction about him. I want to thank God for making him available to us today and also making him available for his generation. I pray that the Lord will preserve him and use him for his purpose in Jesus' name. Finally, I want to welcome our system content of Asia. I believe he must be joining us in this program and all of our professional pastors and senior pastors who have been able to join us on this program. The Lord will bless you and also make you a blessing to your generation. To all of you, our youth advisors and those who will be handling our breakout sessions today, I'm praying that God will indeed fill you with wisdom so that you can impact us even more than ever today and then we'll begin to be better in all areas of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. 
As we go into this program today, please focus and have a target what you want this program to do in your life. Like I said, just say yes to God, say yes to Jesus, and then every other thing will be finding place in your life. Now, as I said, in our July edition of this program, God has a great plan. And that plan is to raise a new generation of leaders. Leaders with a new mindset. Leaders with a new worldview. Leaders with a biblical worldview. People who have the mind of Christ. Who will not see obstacles, but solution. Godly solutions. And be a solution even unto their own generation. I was so blessed by the by the clip, the song we had, you know, as we you know began this program this afternoon. That group said, All we need is Jesus. God is enough. And I want to assure you, He is enough, it's more than enough because He's the all-sufficient God. And I pray that He will continue to be sufficient for us as youths, even in our generation. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God will make you a leader who will change your generation for good. And that's why He wants to keep you so that you can be a change agent even today as we go on in this program. And prayer is that in every sphere of life you find yourself, God will make you a positive change agent in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This yes program has been established by God to effect that and he has already started and nothing will stop us in the name of Jesus Christ. Once again, I want to appeal to all our youths across the continent. Tell other youths in other churches, your schools, in your working places, let them come and join this group. This is the real place to be. And this is the real group to be if you want to excel in life. So God will give you that grace as we meet people all across the oh. continent and encourage them to come in Jesus name. Once again, I want to thank all of us who are on this program today for being part of a new thing God has begun to do, not only in this church, but in our generation. And we will continue to testify of his goodness in Jesus' name. Once again, I say, God bless you as you go to this program. You will be blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you. Pastor Hazard, thank you very much for those Amen. wonderful words. Okay. Thank you very Bless much you. for reassuring us that the Lord is indeed involved in what we're doing here today. And if he's not going, we're not going. And mm. it's only because he has called us that we say, yes, Lord. And yes, we Lord. are here to yeah. continue to resound that answer of yes. And we want every young person, whomever this message can reach, do not be selfish with it. If you know there are some people in your friends' contacts and, and, and your networks who need to hear this word, it is on you right now to go to those byways and hedges. And you don't even need to go out onto the road. It's just taking up your phone and sending a quick text message. Listen, yes is on, get here right now. When we started, we were at 43 participants. We are now at 60. So I know that you have been running with the word and we thank God for you. Right now we are going into the next segment and what we're going to do right now is since we are so many people and i know we're just coming out of lockdown and we're getting back out there we're seeing our friends etc this is a perfect opportunity also to connect with the people on this platform so what we're going to do right now is actually very quickly in five minutes we're going to break us out into different rooms and what we want you to do is just to literally meet and greet the person who is in that room with you so that we have a bit more idea of who we're interacting, who are the people around us. And you just might be surprised that somebody in there could be your destined helper. You never know. Amen. So we're going to break out into some rooms right now for five minutes just to introduce ourselves, say where we are, what we're doing, etc., and just say something about what it means for you to say yes. And what are you saying yes to today? What are you trusting God for in your life today? Amen. We're going to do that right now. So you should have received that invitation on, on, on your screen to join your uh, breakout rooms. Go ahead and accept that, please. And then me.
Hello. 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 I think I'm with um, um, Bulu Atife. How are you? Good, thank and, you. Thank um, you. I can see RCCG PNG. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? All right, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for connecting with us. What about Bulu Atife? How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much Thank for connecting you. with me. I know that it's a, we've got, I think, inside a church in PNG. God bless you. I'm not sure whether Brody Dowie is there, um, but nice to connect with everyone. Um, my name is Ni, um, and I'm based in Sydney, Australia. Um, I'm also one of the pastors here at RCCG um, in Sydney, Australia. Um, so thank you so much for connecting right, so with us. Um, God bless you. God bless you. God bless everyone. Um, sorry, I think I'm muted. Right? Hello. Yeah, can hear you. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> My sister was muted. Sorry. All right, can, can we hear from others too? Can we hear from um, Bolo Atife? Oh, Pastor Priscilla Matis is here as well. Okay, hi everyone, I'm Bolo Atife and I'm um, connecting from Sydney Jubilee Center. Wow, amazing, amazing. God bless you, God bless you. And does anyone want to talk from PNG? Are people in PNG? Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Is that prosper? Yes, sir. Yeah. God bless you. Can we hear from one or two people? Yeah. Hello. My name is Brandon. My second time. Second time. Wow. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amazing. Wow. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. God bless you. You're really welcome. Our people in Papua New Guinea. That's great. Hello, my name is Boy. Oh, wow. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Such amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you so much. Well, that's great. That's great. That's great. That's great. Hello. All right, sir. <laughs> Hello, sir. My name is Chris. I'm investing the property. Wow. God bless you. Thank you so much. A second time of coming. Thank you. We appreciate you. Amazing work. Amazing work. Amazing work. Hi, sir. My name is Hi. All right. God bless you. Great. Hello. <laughs> Hello, this is my first time here. My name is Diane. God bless you. I think that that maybe we'll, we'll stop there because of time. We'll yeah, go yeah, back to the day. That's it. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Does Pastor Martins want to say anything? Hi, everyone. Hello. 
Hello. Yeah, Gustola Martins from Auckland, New Zealand. God bless you all. I'm sure it's going to be an exciting time for all of us. Just get ready. Anything can happen. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. I think uh, we believe in the room now. God bless you. Uh, Dr. Burry, welcome back. Are we coming back from the breakout rooms now? Yes, okay, thank you, sir. Okay, rooms are closing in 30 seconds. Yeah, we're all back. Okay, wonderful. We're all back. Fantastic. Okay, so. I see Benga Ojumu saying, great experience, good idea, <laughs> made new contacts and friends. And that's the idea, right? You know, in these sort of societies, and I always talk about it, sometimes you don't even know who your neighbors are, mm. right? If something were to happen to you and you needed help in your own apartment or home, would you be able to run next door and bang on the door and say, hey, help me, you know? Um, I think as children of God, we are linked by the spirit of God, amen? And so it behooves us, it actually is on us to allow our light to shine. When the Bible says, allow your light to shine that others may see your good works and come to glorify your Father in heaven. When we do that, we are tapping into the invisible connection, amen? And we are calling others to ourselves as we point them toward the cross of Jesus. And that is what we're about here today. If you have made a friend, if you have made a contact, I want to challenge you to try to maintain that link. Try to maintain that content and try to nurture a new relationship today. We are back and we are ready now to go into our next segment. Dr. Burry, are we going to be singing our way into glory or are we jumping straight into the word? Because I know there are some eager people here, you know. When people hear that, Pastor Dami is here, like, oh my goodness, What? They are here and they're yeah, ready. I, I think we should go straight into it, straight into it. So um, I will um, ask Dr. Sam Ekundaya to do the honors. Fantastic. Yes! Pastor <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dami, good to see you here. Uh, uh, it's a great uh, joy and honor to uh, be the one to introduce you today. And I'm delighted from the depths of my heart. Uh, because everyone, sincerely, I love this man of God from the depth of my heart, and it's an incredible joy and privilege um, for him to be here today, and we are very grateful. Uh, in 2016, uh, December 2016, I just gotten clarity of my purpose, and my wife and I went to visit one of our very good friends here in New Zealand, and I remember, you know, I was just sharing with that very good friend of ours, and I was saying, this is what God has spoken to me to start doing and helping people discover their purpose. And I'm going to start making videos soon and all of that. And this friend of mine said, mm -mm -mm -mm. And she opened up her Facebook. She said, before you start, I need you to check out this man of God. You need to go and check out this man of God. And then she opened, she typed Damilola Olua Toivo, and she gave me the link and she sent it to my message so that I don't forget. And she said, follow this man, follow this man. And since then, to the glory of God, I've been following and I've been learning. I've been following and I've been learning. Those, those initial years was trying to talk like him. <laughs> <laughs> you know? oh. <laughs> and you know i really honor him so much uh, to the glory of god i've learned so much from him and in 2018 
we eventually met face to face and i can tell you his humility blew me away i mean someone you've been following for 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 a couple of years and all of a sudden you see the person they are sitting with you they are holding you they are hugging you they want to have a photo with you that doesn't just happen like that his humility completely blew me away and uh, and today you know we're friends is my teacher um, uh, you know a mentor that i really look up to and i'm so grateful to god uh, uh, to have uh, Pastor Dami Oluato Iboy here today. He knows, I tell him all the time that I love him so much. So I don't know if I tell him as much, <laughs> too much than uh, his wife does tell him, but I, I do tell him enough and I'm very grateful. Let me just read his bio so you get to uh, get your own perspective of how much I honor this man of God. Dami Oluato Iboy is one of the most creative, captivating and compelling communicators to have emerged from Nigeria. He's a blend of gifts and grace, a dynamic speaker, insightful writer, personal transformation expert, corporate trainer, prolific songwriter, and spiritual leader. Yes, he's written a few songs. You should check him out on YouTube. He's on a mission to empower people to rise and reign as kings. His passion is to change the world by raising kingdom influencers through transformational trainings and the timeless messages he delivers in a captivating oratorical style. He occupies a unique space as he masterfully speaks to the sacred and secular systems with uncommon wisdom. As a professional speaker and trainer, he designs and delivers top quality and high impact trainings that elevates productivity. He has created over 20 online programs and published seven books, including Just Do It, Seize the Moment, Good to Go, New Year Guide, and Life Lessons from Football. You should check that out if you're a football fan. I promise it will change your life. Dami is the pastor of Kings. In 2017, he began to raise kingdom influencers in nations, generation, and systems. A vibrant community with operations spanning a local church with a global vision, as well as churches and outreaches. His ministrations are marked by uplifting insights, prophetic precision, divine wisdom, spontaneous worship, and transformational power. I must say that that is very true. I happen to once a while join their services online. I'm sure he doesn't know this, <laughs> but I do. And I would see him live, you know, coach people on stage, sometimes uh, prophecies going on, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, uh, just busting into spontaneous worship. Amazing. Anything can happen here today. And anything is allowed. <laughs> <laughs> he has also released a number of uplifting songs, including I'm Not Alone. That's actually my favorite. I'm Not Alone. Uh, the Grace Favor Chant and the acclaimed single, Lit. That's uh, the newest one. Really amazing. His songs have infused hope and encouragement in the hearts of millions of people through television and the internet. Widely celebrated for his oratorical presentations and inspirational leadership, he is a recipient of several awards and recognition. Over the last decade, he has shared his solutions and strategies for growth with millions of people in Africa, Europe, and the Middle East. And we can as well actually talk about the Oceania now, to the glory of God, uh, 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 touching the hearts of both young and old through live presentations, television, radio, print media, and the internet. A mentor to many spiritual uh, and business leaders, including myself, is widely celebrated as one of the most inspiring voices of his generation, and he is increasing, he's in increasing demand at conferences, seminar, workshops, and church events. Dami is happily married to his best friend and teammate, the delectable Toju. Uh, Toju Oluwatoibo. They are blessed with two adorable sons, Kamain and Ronel, and they are fulfilling their life mission together. For more information and his training and everything that we've talked about today, please visit globalgreatness.org. Globalgreatness.org. I'll put it in the chats very soon. Please join me uh, with Jesus' joy and uh, an amazing RCCG Yes Welcome. Uh, inviting this wonderful man of God, Pastor Damlola Oluwatoibo, to the stage. God bless you, sir. So good to have you. Oh, I feel like <laughs> it is great to be here. Just really loved listening to Dr. Sam on that. Thank you so much for being so generous and passionate and consistent and focused on this amazing message of purpose and all the other tributaries and outlets that you give expression to. We're so grateful to have you. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you so much for the privilege of participating in what I believe is transformational already just by being here. What happens really is that by being connected to certain things, the value of your experience is already going up, right? Just by being situated, if you're um, 
knowledgeable about real estate, they will tell you that location, location, location. And a gathering is actually a spiritual allocation experience, right? So you can just write it down somewhere there, S-E-A, since you're talking about the Oshania, right? <laughs> a, a spiritual allocation experience, right? I want us to keep that in mind. Um, and today, before I go into the word, I know that we have a lot lined up. So I want to, first of all, celebrate the incredible leadership who have taken our time to allocate resources, energy, inspiration, drive, direction to ensure that people all across the continent can have this opportunity to be immersed in a new body of, body of knowledge. Please celebrate with me, the Australian continental overseer, Pastor Abraham Hastrops. Can we just celebrate Woo! our man of God? It is good to see you, yeah. sir. I doff my heart. I bow my heart to the grace of God upon your life. And we just honor you. Thank you for your visionary leadership. Thank you for your passionate fathering and mentoring. Thank you for your largeness of heart um, to ensure that this is not just the program you take off, but a program that you actually invest heavily in. We honor you. And I want to celebrate my friend, my brother, somebody that I've met maybe just in just the last about 18 months or so. And I just admire his heart. And see the big smile over there. Just that sweet, sweet, sweet smile. <laughs> On top of a brilliant mind, an incredible brain, right? We celebrate Dr. Neighbor. Thank you so much for all that you do in providing much needed strategic support and um, oversight in many areas. We honor you. And of course, Dr. Sam, love you from the bottom of my heart. I saw Charles earlier coordinating. Uh, shout out to Charles. <laughs> all right. Are we ready? If you're ready, yeah. type yes in the comments. Type yes, Y-E-S, yes. Y-E-S, yes. Y -E -S, yes. We are bound to experience liquid fire, liquid drive, intensity. You know, it's amazing how many people think that God is one boring old man sitting somewhere in the clouds waiting for his pension. Please write this down somewhere. Your offering is not God's pension. Come on, somebody. Write that down somewhere right now. Your offering is not God's pension. God is not one old, boring individual trying to bully people into his will. He's a loving father. He's, uh, he's full of love. He's full of passion. When you see the operation of the Spirit of God in the Bible, you don't see any kind of senility. You don't see any kind of atrophy. You see him as a running river. You see him as a burning fire. You see him as a mighty rushing wind. In other words, God is an active God. He is moving. He is rushing. He is moving. He is pouring out. And today, as we connect, I want somebody to be expectant. I want somebody's heart to be open. I want somebody's mind to be animated. I want somebody's blood to pump extra fast. No high blood pressure here, but I wanted to have God pressure, not blood pressure. Come on, somebody. Put in the comment box. Say, I have GP because I'm GP and I don't need a GP. What I mean by that is that I have God pressure. Come on. That's GP because I am God's property, second GP, and I don't need a general practitioner just about now. No insult to all the medical practitioners. We love you, we need you, but in this moment, we are talking about the pressure that God is stirring in somebody's heart to say yes. Is anybody ready right now? Ready, 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 ready right now. Come on. Is anybody ready right now? Ready, 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 ready right now. Come on. Is anybody ready right now? Ready, 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 ready right now. Come on, come on. <laughs> All right. I see Charles and Dr. Sam busting some moves. Come on, come on, come on, come on. All right. So let's go. First Samuel chapter three. First Samuel chapter three. A popular passage of the Bible that I'm trusting God to help me apply generationally, continentally, and personally right about now. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. The Bible says, now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. That is an important line, an important introduction, which begins to tell us the number one ministry is not the exclusive preserve of age. 
because it says the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord. That means that we shall honor, celebrate, rever, respect our fathers in the faith. We should celebrate, appreciate, and honor those who have gone ahead of us. But we must never relegate the burden and the assignment of ministering to God just to them. The word says that Samuel was a boy. He was supposedly inexperienced. He did not have all the pedigree. He possibly never had a pedicure. He was definitely not a man. So maybe he had no manicure. But the word says that even though he was a boy, he could still cure some things because he ministered unto the Lord. He ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in his place. And when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see. And before the Lamb of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was. And while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel and said, and he answered, here I am. So he ran to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. And he said, Eli said to him, I did not call you, lie down again. And it went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. He answered, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord. Now was the word of the Lord revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again in the, th the third time. So he arose and went to Eli and said, here I am for you did call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the boy. Therefore, Eli said to Samuel, go lie down and it shall be because you that you must say, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in the place. Now the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel, <laughs> Dr. Samuel, 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 even if your name is not Samuel, Samuel, put your name in the church right now. Put Charles in the church right now. Put James in the church right now. Put Femi in the church right now. Uh, whatever your name is, Thywa in the chats right now, Catherine in the chats, uh, Elizabeth in the chats, said, God is calling you. God said, Samuel, Samuel, the Lord, and Samuel answered, speak for your seven years. Then the Lord said to Samuel, behold, I will do something in Israel at which both ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. Come on. Oh, thank you, Father. Thank you, Spirit of the Most High God. We thank you for the surge of your presence, for the wind of your spirit, for the burst of your glory, for the flow of your power, for the manifestation of your essence, for the revelation of your word, for the declaration of your intention. Even as we connect, even at this hour, across timelines, across territorial lines, across space and time, let there be a download of your original intention from eternity's past. Let there be the surge of strength that somebody needs to be able to say yes. Father, we ask, oh God, that you'll stretch forth your sword and you will judge every work of the flesh standing in the way of your eternal agenda in our lives. Father, we receive the spirit of submission, alignment, and yieldedness to be open up to you, to do what you have ordained for us in, in time. Father, we give you all the praise right now. Let somebody's spiritual ears be open. Let our hearts be enlightened. Let our souls be submit, submissive. Let our bodies be responsive as we say yes to what you have ordained. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Come on, somebody say amen right now. The very first thing I want to say at this time is to realize something about God. God is not a reactionary God. God is a visionary God. There are two broad categories of people in the world today. There are people who are reactionary and there are people who are visionary. When we see the holy word, when we see the operations of God, the word makes it very clear to us in Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 10. It says that God is the one who completes the, the end before he speaks the beginning. He ordains, come on somebody, he completes his work, the full body of knowledge, the full scope before he begins to unpack before he begins to reveal, before he begins to unleash. Paul writes to the Corinthian church and said, God who commands light to shine out of darkness has commanded his light to shine in our hearts. So please understand something, that there is nothing that happens in your life that takes God by surprise. There is no accident, no simon delay, no complication, no error, no failure. 
that God has not factored into the operation of the spirit concerning your life. God is never going to find a situation that is going to make him say, hey, oh God, because he is God. There is nothing that will ever happen that will make Jesus say, hey, Jesus, 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 because he is Jesus. He is absolutely in control. He is seated in eternity. And from there, he governs and marshals the times and the seasons of men. He is the one who dishes out the epochs, the eons, the ages. He rolls them according to his prophetic calendar. The book of Psalms says that he has set the limits upon the waves and the winds, and he has commanded the sea this far and no further. Somebody say, that's my God. My God, he rides on the winds. My God, he determines the speed of the clouds. My God, he determines the size of the fish and how high the birds can fly. My God, he determines uh, the number of decibels that the lion can roar. My God, he determines the height of every blade of grass, the contour on every mountain. My God, he is the one who determines what's going to happen. He is eternal in his approach. He is a visionary God. What it means, therefore, is that anytime you see anything on earth, it's already been factored into the calendar of God. Jesus said, behold, I come in the volume of the books. It is written of me to do your will, O God. What it means is that your life is already encoded in a book. Psalm 139 says, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. He said, all my days you have written in your book. Watch this. Even when there was none of them. There is a song I love very much by William McDowell. He said, my life is not your, my own. To you I belong. You are the author of my life. You are not the drink, but you are the origin. Come on, somebody. There's a drink called origin with a J. God is not that drink, but he is the origin. He is the source. He is the source. And please write this down. If God is the source, then I can trust him with my cause. If God is the source, then I can trust them, write it down somewhere, with my course, with the movements, the labyrinth, the landscape, the flow, the ebb and the rise, the contours and the twists, the bends and the rhythm. I can trust God, not only because he claims to be God, but because he's been running things thousands of years, sorry, millions of years, sorry, timeless time before I got here. When we understand this now, we begin to read the Bible from a different approach. That whilst we are the one reacting or responding to what is happening, God is the one who is determined from the back end how to make everything that is hap happening work together for our good. Watch this. Without violating the ability of man to choose. Only God is wise enough to put himself or insert himself in the equation of man without violating man's ability to exercise self-will or choice. Only God is wise enough to be able to pick the weaknesses, the indecisions, the poor decisions, the poor judgments, and still work it together. And so in the Bible, we see a scenario that is quite frustrating. It's a scenario where Hannah does not have a child. The Bible says that her contemporary called Penina or pain in her, oh Lord, help me now. Penina or pain in her was actually given birth every day, baby shower. Come on, they knew her name in the maternity ward. In fact, maybe they had dedicated a bed to her in Jerusalem General Hospital, JGH, where Dr. Nee's four beers were actually making the rounds. Come on, somebody. <laughs> because girl be popping babies on the, I was going to say on the daily, every year, or every other year, or something like that. And it can be frustrating when it is, please observe, where somebody who may seem just as gifted as you are, or maybe not as gifted as you are, seems to be popping babies, brain children of books and concepts and ideas, or heart children of spiritual disciples, or environmental impact, or cultural influence. But Hannah is wondering what's going on. And Hannah does not have an idea that Samuel has to come at a certain time. Come on. Because there's an eternal calendar that God has. Samuel cannot be born too early because Eli's ministry was still running. Come on. 
The reason some things have not happened is not because you are not good enough. It's that it's not yet time. It's not because you're not gifted enough. It's that it's not yet time. Please write this down. Sometimes there is a delay because it is a relay. Write it down somewhere. Sometimes there is a delay because it is a relay. How many of us remember the relay race? Remember the relay race, maybe in school or college, where you had four people on the race and see what was, what's going on there. Four people on the race, and then you see that you are posturing and waiting. You are posturing and waiting. What are you waiting for? For the baton. You're waiting for the baton to be handed over to you. So you are waiting. And somebody who looks at you on the tracks, watch that, is going to be like, well, what is that guy doing on the tracks? He's not running. He's not in motion. He's not covering ground. Nobody's cheering him. Nobody's hailing her. Nobody's supporting her. But guess what? She's still on the track. I want to speak to somebody under God. Maybe your ministry has not taken flight. Maybe your business has not exploded. Maybe the impact you're supposed to have has not come to the fore. But stay on the track. Oh, my God. Stay on the track. I know that we're going to have a breakout session on creativity and innovation and entrepreneurship and leadership. Stay on the track. If you stay on the track and you stay in your lane, a baton is coming. God is about to release a mantle of grace into your life. Or like Charles said, a new dimension of the supernatural is about to come to you. But you've got to posture for it. You've got to maintain a healthy attitude. You've got to maintain a heart that craves God and loves people. You've got to maintain a heart that uses things because it loves people, not a heart that uses people because it loves things. Come on. Can you hear what I'm saying? That you've got to stay postured and stay on track. If you stay on track, you will not lack. Come on. If you stay on track, you will not lack. If you stay on track, you will see the train of your life about to start going. You are going to start seeing the moves of God, the mantles of God, the grace of God operate in your life. High five somebody right where you are or notch them if you're still social distance right now give somebody a low leg or an elbow and say i'm staying on track i'm staying on track and staying in my purpose and staying in my lane i'm staying in my sphere i'm staying in my assignment i'm staying in the location god sent me to the grass may be greener on the other side but god is the greenest green come on god is more green than leaves god is more green than dollar notes god is more green than and Greenwich Meridian time. God is the greenest green. Come on, somebody. I'm staying on track and I'm not missing the mark. Somebody look for a neighbor and tell that neighbor, I'm staying on track and I'm not missing the mark. Woo. Woo. I feel God. I feel God in somebody's life. Somebody who failed. You failed in school and had a delay. You relocated and transitioned and you got stuck for two years. You are waiting for your papers for the last three years. Things don't seem to be working for you. I feel the power of God. I feel the spirit of God ministering life to somebody's heart to say, according to the prophetic calendar, there is still a recalibration. The delay is because there is a relay. It's not yet your turn, Busola Martins. But guess what, Lee's Hope? Guess what, Charles? Guess what? I see God moving in your life. I see God saying, it's about time. Can you feel the breeze? Can you feel the wheeze? Can you feel the switch of the spirit? Can you feel the mantles of glory? Can you feel the surge of the spirit about to move you in a different dimension? If you stay on track, there is the wind of God that is about to lift you. For the Bible says they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as of eagles. Stay on track. Hannah straight stays on track. And guess what? The word says that she began to pray and seek the face of God. So sometimes God is going to use the delays in your life to posture your heart. He will use the delays in your life to discipline your soul. I got to say that again. Sometimes God will use the delays, the seeming delays in your life. To man, it looks like a delay. To God, it's a relay. To man, it's a delay. To God, it's a relay. Come on, start. Let's say, to man, it's a delay. 
So God, it's a relay. So man, it's a delay. So God, it's a relay. It's a relay. It's a relay. Come on. Come on. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I feel God. Charles, thank you for passing the ball to me. He said, you're speaking to me. I love that. If this is the word, you're right Ah, I see that someone is giving me a witness by leaving their microphone open right now. Come on. So see this. Sometimes God use the delay in your life to culture you, to posture you for destiny. He will use the delays, seeming delays in your life to discipline your soul, to hold you in place, to create the tension that your spirit man needs to be in tune and in sync with the times ahead and the times that have gone. And don't forget now that Hannah's delay is actually for Hannah's purpose. Don't forget now that Samuel's delay is actually for Samuel's ministry. Don't forget what I said initially. The God of eternal wisdom is able to use delays and frustrations and downtimes and all kinds of complications to work out, to work out his agenda. Who would have imagined that the betrayal of Joseph, I feel the glory of God all over me right now. Who would have imagined that the betrayal of Joseph's brothers was well, going to be the escalator upon which he was going to ride into increasing levels of influence in a foreign land who could have imagined that judas betraying jesus come on was going to be the trigger wherefore he was given a name above every other name that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue confesses isn't it interesting that there is a betrayal quotient in the equation of your destiny but god is able to use the betrayal quotient the bq come on to take you away from the bq the boys quarters into the kq the king's quarters isn't it interesting that god is able to use Use everything that was against you to push you and to lift you that you can discover your ability to fly just because you are the wind of adversity. Come to wrestle your wings and ruffle your feathers. Please write this down somewhere. Sometimes when your feathers are ruffled, your wings are strengthened. Come on, somebody. Write it down somewhere. Sometimes. When your feathers are ruffled, then your wings are strengthened. Listen, gentlemen, I got to run. Observe now that Hannah is praying and there is a prophetic encounter with Eli. I want to write this down, please. As you say yes, understand that God is going to bring instructions, inspiration, revelation, correction, prophecy through uncommon God contacts. God contact. Hannah knew what she wanted. She wanted a child. God knew what he wanted. He wanted a prophet. And once Hannah's heart was postured right, once Hannah bought into the agenda of God, into the eternal scripts of God, into the codes of God, into the intelligence of the spirit, and saw that what God wanted was a prophet, Hannah, by spiritual intelligence, came into alignment and said, God, if you give me a son, I'll give you a prophet. See, the best kind of deal is when you know what God wants and you do everything in your life to make that available to him. What is God looking for? God is looking for two major things on earth. He's looking for nations and he's looking for generations. So when he approaches even an individual, he's looking through that individual to see generations. So when he sees Abraham, he sees father of men and nations. When he sees Isaac, he says Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he sees nations and generations. When it calls Abraham, he sees nations and generations. When it calls David, he sees nations and generations. When it sees Jesus, he sees nations and generations. When he calls Saul, who becomes Paul, he says nations and generations. He's going to see nations because Paul will go to the Gentile nations. And he says, go and see generations because Timothy will come as a result of Paul. Barnabas and Silas and other faithful men. Somebody said there are nations in me. Somebody said there are generations in me. And you must be sensitive to the God-ordained connections, to the God relationships, to the God contacts. They'll make that happen. Hannah is praying, but Hannah does not get to the point of delivery without a God contact 
with Eli. And that's how we must begin a transition right now in the moments I have left. Please observe this. The word makes it very clear to us that ministry and destiny are not solo projects. Ministry and destiny are not solo projects. They are transgenerational and cross-national or cross-continental projects. They are not solo projects. They are cross-cultural and intergenerational projects. How do I know that? Because when we read the word of God in the book of Psalms chapter 143, come on somebody, stay with me. I've got about 12 or so minutes left. When you see, when you see the word of God in Psalms chapter 145 and in verse 4, or from verse 3 actually, he says, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness, watch this now, is unsearchable. Whoosh, hulubriah. In other words, when you look at God and you feel like I've seen everything there is about God, I say you just did start in Nigerian parlance. You never start. You have not started. He said his greatness is unsearchable. Watch this now. God is great. You can see the height of God. Listen, please. Nobody. Hey, I love this one. Dr. Sam, you're going to send me your notes. I see you taking so many notes. You're going to send me your notes. You're going to send me this one. This one just came spontaneously. Nobody has ever made clothes for God because they can't take his measurements. <laughs> Woo! Woo -hoo 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 -hoo. Nobody has ever made clothes for God. He has no, no wardrobe consultant because he can't take his measurement. He's so tall, you can discover his length or his height. He's so wide, you can take a measurement of his waist. Come on. Or even his little finger is bigger than your longest step rule. Even his little finger is bigger than your longest step rule. But this is where I'm going. Verse 4, he says, One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. Now, because God's greatness is unsearchable because of the infinity of his paternity, or his paternity in an infinity, or the infinity in his paternity, because of the magnitude of his pulchritude, because of the largesse of his loveliness, because of all of that. He said one generation is too small. This is the reason the Yes Conference is so important, because God wants an older generation to pour into another generation. God is the God of the overflow. No generation has ever presented any bucket that is big enough to house his fullness. Say, hey, no generation has ever produced any container that is large enough to describe the depth of his quality, the weight of his worth, the magnitude of his mercy, the length of his love, the greatness of his grace. No generation. So every generation will have to overflow into the next generation. Somebody shout yes. Somebody shout yes. This yeah. is the reason we need you to say yes. Because God has enough to pour. And yes is what unlocks your own vessel for more of God to come. See, God is not asking you to get more of him. God is eager to pour more of himself into your yes. Your yes is the secret code that opens the vault of your spirit, man. Your yes is the acceptance code. Like when you have a legal contract and there is an offerer and an offeree. When you say yes, you're putting your signature on it. You're saying, yes, Lord, I'm ready. You're saying, yes, Lord, I want to go. You're saying, yes, Lord, it's time to move. Because there are not enough vessels. Uh, there are God, God, there's more God than we have vessels. There is more oil than we have vessels. There's more more rain than we have rivers. There is more that God wants to do. Lord, I pray even in this moment, stir up somebody in their hearts and in their minds and in their comfort zones and in their territories and wherever they are. Some of you can feel the fire right now in your palms and in your knees and in your feet and in your heart and in your eyes. Why? Because there is a rich and fire that is saying this is your word. This is your time. This is your season. This is your calling. Say yes, sir. 
Oh, three quick points. The first why, the first thing in yes is why. That why stands for yieldedness. <laughs> yieldedness. Samuel was given to the Lord. Why? Because Hannah was yielded to the Lord. Until we are yielded to the Lord, we cannot dedicate our offspring to the Lord. Until we are yielded to the Lord, our businesses cannot be dedicated to the Lord. If we are not yielded to the Lord, we will still argue, should I pay tithe or not? Oh, until we are yielded, we will still argue, should I still wake up that early or not? Should I serve the Lord in the department or not? We're still going to be. Yieldedness is the state of the soul. He that allows the influence of another. Yield and as the why in yes is yield. God says, I want to yield. Please listen to this. Until you yield your interest, your life will not yield its interest. Until you yield your interest, until you surrender your own interest, your own desires, your own will, your own agenda, your own drive, your own desperation, until you lay down like Moses laid the rod in the presence of God, your life will not yield the interest. Moses had no idea that the rod in his hand, that old crooked staff, that old thing that he must have cut out of a dead tree, the word says that he laid it down until he laid it down. He did not know that that thing was going to become a remote control that will part nations, that will part the Red Seas and open up the portals of influence into a different territory. Your gift needs to be yielded. Come on, somebody. Your ability, your oil, the fragrant oil of God upon your life, the possibilities of the agenda of heaven concerning your life have to be yielded. Somebody say, yes, Lord. Ayabaka. God says, I want to take you across New Zealand and Australia, across Switzerland, across Europe, across America. There is somebody you see yourself when you dream, you see yourself navigating the world, and God says it's not a fantasy. You are not just, it's not a figment of your imagination. You are in the stream of glory. You are in the stream of grace. You are in the stream of life. Say yes. Number one, yieldedness. Eli had begun to drift and to miss the plots, but he was still sensitive enough to tell Samuel, when you hear that voice, when you hear that voice, please listen to this. This is the reason we must be yielded. Being yielded to God is not just about being yielded to God. Being yielded to God is also seen in our being yielded to the men that God has called. Because the generation that feels like giftedness means calling. Giftedness does not mean calling. You can be gifted and not called. A gift is given to you, a calling locates you amongst the people you are gifted to. Your gifts are given to you, but your calling makes you a gift to other people. Is somebody following what I'm saying? So yes, you can write by you authorized right now. Ooh. How do I know that Samuel was submitted to Eli? Because when Samuel heard the voice of God, he heard the voice of God. Ooh, but it was the accent of Eli. He was so submissive that he heard God's voice as the voice of his pastor. That's the reason I thought it was his pastor calling him. Because he was so in alignment with his pastor, with his prophet, with his mentor, with his leader. That when God spoke to him, he heard the voice of his past. He didn't say a strange voice. He said, Eli, you're the one calling me. And Eli said, no, 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 I didn't call you. Yieldedness, a heart of surrender. Number two, the E in yes is expectation. Expectation. Eli said to him, when you hear it again, Kalamasa, in other words, your calling is going to be activated by expectation. He said, when, Kalabaya, when you hear it again, the God who did it in the days of T.L. Osborne, 
the God who did it in the days of Renard Bonke, the God who did it in the day of Billy Graham, the God who is still doing it in the day of Daddy E.A. Adeboe. He is still going to do it in our days. Why? Expectation. One generation will prison to another. So we have seen the cripple walk, but Dr. Sam, get ready because there are some of us in this generation that as people are watching our live transmission, their cripple are going to walk, blind eyes are going to open as they attend our trainings and webinars and seminars, as they enter the breakout rooms uh, in a seemingly casual conversation, a transfer of supernatural power is going to keep the space. Somebody shout yes, Lord. Somebody holler yes. Somebody holler yes. Yes, Lord. I still believe. He said, when you hear that voice, in other words, uh, Samuel, I want it to be expectant. I want to know why God is going to speak again. God spoke to you in 2016. He will speak again. God spoke to you in college in 2012. He will speak again. God brought you through. You must have expectation. The word says, not the plans of the righteous, but the expectation expectations of the righteous shall not be cut short. Ooh. Expectation, 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 yieldedness. Why? Expectation. Number two, I'm expectant. Expectation is betrayed through preparation. My preparation betrays my expectation. My preparation betrays my expectation. I know that you are expectant when I see how you're preparing. When somebody's preparing for the exams, then we know they're expecting to graduate. When somebody's preparing for a sermon, then we know they're, they're expecting to bless lives. When somebody's preparing their documents, then we know they're ready to travel. When somebody's preparing their car, we know they're about to cover a distance. When an athlete is preparing himself, running the race before or in the backside of nowhere, we know they're getting ready to win the gold medal. So don't tell me you're expecting just by saying it. Show me you're expecting by preparing for it. Show me you're expecting by connecting. Show me you're expecting by aligning. Show me you're expecting. Ooh, Rabanda Kavas. If somebody's getting blessed, please shout yes. If you're at a viewing center, shout yes. Oh, yes, I see some people at the viewing center, the RCC, PNG. Come on, somebody, shout yes. Yeah. Shout yes. Yeah. Shout yes. Shout yeah. yes. Shout yes. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, I see yes. Come on. Number three, and I close with this. Number one is yieldedness. He was yielded. Live a yielded life. Please write this down. Don't just have yielded seasons. Live a yielded life. Most of us have yielded seasons. But God wants us to have a yielded life. I see Ayonimi Martins, I see Femi Matthews, I see Benga Ojomo, I see Tunde Ajayomi, I see Ruth. Number three, ooh, spiritual sensitivity and service. S, spiritual sensitivity and service. Why are they together? Because there are many people who miss it. Some people are like, I just come to serve and serve and serve and serve. Jesus. I'm in the ushering team. I'm on the committee. I'm on the planning team. I just serve and serve. But they are not spiritually sensitive. And they are those who are spiritually sensitive, right? But they are not serving. So I'm like, mm. I, I just want to maintain my posture. I just want to serve God honorably. I don't want to be distracted. I just want to, right. But look at what the word says. It said, they that worship the Lord. It said, they that worship, the ask come, that they that worship must worship in spirit and in truth. When the temptation of Jesus, he said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. He said, your God alone, him alone shall you worship and him alone shall you serve. So in God's mind, he does not divorce service and worship. Mm -hmm. He wants us to serve him with our worship and he wants our service to be a form of worship. So we worship and serve. We serve and we worship. We're not just there to clean the candlesticks. We're also there to be spiritually animated and spiritually alive. 
So yes, you are the captain in your industry. You have been raised to be an inventor. You have been raised as an innovator. You have been raised to patent some God-given ideas. You have been raised to begin to build a business in your part of the world and from there to export it across the world. But can I ask you a question? Are you operating from the place of spiritual service? Oh yes. Or are you operating from the place of self-ambition, self-drive? Are you trying to use God or are you laying down your life so that God can use you? Mm. This is not just the yieldedness to hear. This is the alignment to obey. This is the alignment to obey, which means that you don't see your being in a gathering of believers as your only service. But when you're in the marketplace, making the presentation, crafting the proposal, negotiating the deals, you are doing it from a place of spiritual sensitivity and service. Because we're in the generation of the king priest, it says you are a chosen generation, a holy nation, a peculiar people, a royal priesthood, king priest. As a king, you serve. As a priest, you worship. And God says, do not divorce both of them. I want people who can worship me as the, as the serve and serve me as the worship. Woo! It says, when we have this three together, Samuel, what did God say in verse 10? He said, I will do something in Israel that will cause the ears of people to tingle. As I close, I close with prophetic utterances. Please open up your heart and let your soul be expectant. In the name of Jesus, as you yield to the God of heaven, as you expect greater than what you've seen before, as you serve him with spiritual sensitivity, let there be an explosion of the miracle miraculous in your life. Let there be an explosion of God power in your life. Not gunpowder, but gunpowder that is more effective than gunpowder. Receive it right now in the name of Jesus. I proclaim concerning you, Malia Katoza, Rekotos Peledevila, that there is a supernatural surge of capacity and strength that goes beyond what you have seen before. Somebody shout yes, sir. Yes and amen. Lord, let there be a stirring of young men and women, of boys and girls, who will be raised as stones uh, to build a mighty edifice all across New Zealand, all across Solomon Islands, all across Australia, all across the Pacific. Lord, let there be a surge in the name of Jesus, of radical revolutionaries, of incredible voices, of dynamic individuals, of spiritually strengthened and spirit-powered people who will take territory for God. We receive it right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody receive it. Lord, stir up the hearts of men and women. As we say yes, we see the miraculous. As we say yes, we see the uncommon. As we say yes, we see that which we haven't seen before. Our ears begin to tingle. Our expectations are exceeded. Our drive will not be extinguished. We proclaim it right now. I speak favor, a flow of favor over every individual, over everyone here, every family, every territory, every parish, every assembly, every gathering. As you say yes, you are backed up by heaven. The word says that none of the words of Samuel fell to the ground. Nothing coming out of you will drop dead again. Nothing coming out of you will perish again. Nothing coming out of you will fail again. Nothing coming out of you will be lost again. No fruit of your womb or the fruit of your mind will perish again. Again. You are blessed. You are enlarged. You are equipped. You are strengthened. You flow with grace. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Somebody, if you receive the word today, shout yes. Shout yes. Shout yes. 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 Woo. yes. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God yeah. bless you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Oh Jesus. my goodness. Yeah. Somebody drop it in the chat right yeah. now. Yes. Yes, yes, and yes. That is the only answer we're accepting right now to the call of God on your life, to what God has raised you to do in this generation, in this time. Your answer must be yes. Oh my God. I only wish, Pastor Dami, that we could go on and go on, and go on. The word of God cannot be contained within a few minutes. 
of this exhortation, but we are so grateful for the hand of God upon you, my dear pastor. Thank you so very much for yielding yourself, that you first have taken the step that you are encouraging us to take, that we will yield ourselves, that we will turn our cups up, that when God is pouring out in this generation, we can receive, and then we can pour into the next generation. Thank you, sir. Thank you so very much for being here. Thank you for answering the call. You did not turn it down when it came, but you answered it and you turn up and God has come with his word through you. We tell you to sir. Thank you so very much. And I want us to just put a word of thank you. God bless you. Something for the man of God in that chat right now. Or if you want to unmute your microphone and do it very quickly, one second and tell him thank you. Tell the Lord thank you on his behalf. Thank you, sir. Thank you, man of God. God bless you, sir. Thank you, sir. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Appreciate the grace of God upon you. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Thank you so very much, Pastor Demi. Thank you so very much. We're so grateful for the word that God has really put in you this morning or this afternoon to impart to this generation. You don't know what you're doing. You might not know how far this is reaching, but I'm telling you, that spoke to me. Yes, My I'll heart was a word of prayer for him before he departs, please. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Okay. Pastor Hashem. My yes. heart was doing back to it because Jesus. the word you spoke are the same word God has Thank been telling me. Jesus. Come on, Thank come on. I'm, ta I'm talking to you right now. Thank this generation is waiting for you. you this generation is waiting for all of us who are Thank sitting you, here, Jesus. wherever Thank we Jesus. are connected Thank from. Jesus. We are saying Thank yes Jesus. to the call of God. Thank and I don't care Jesus. what you've been through. I don't care how difficult Thank last year was. I don't care how hard 2021 has been. The God who sees the end from the beginning, he knows everything altogether. He sees the big Thank picture. He Jesus. knows why you've gone through what you've gone through. And he knows exactly where you're going to. It is That's not... Right. God's delay, it is his relay. God is calling us to pass the baton, to keep moving, to keep running, to keep pressing no matter what. Just like Paul said, I'm forgetting the things behind me and I'm pressing, I'm pushing. Mm -hmm. And this morning, I just want to encourage all of us as the word has come, do not let it be about the excitement of the moment. But take the word as it has come and ask God that really and truly it will be impressed permanently upon your heart. It will not depart and it will guide you into the leading, into the will of God for your lives. Father, we thank you, mighty God. Pastor Hastro, please, sir. Please pray. I want our people all participants to just stretch their hands toward the screen to our brother. And God will bless and multiply the virtue that has gone out of him in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your son. Father, we stretch our hands towards him. Oh, no distance with you. Please multiply your grace, multiply your anointing, multiply your virtue that has gone out even this hour of the night in Nigeria and even afternoon here. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you increase your son on every side. You perfect everything concerning physically, spiritually, ministerially, that your son will affect this generation and even generations. For your glory in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for bringing us in contact with him and bringing him in contact with us in this continent. Bless him in every place he goes in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Lord bless you. I know one day we'll be here physically in Australia. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. We'll make it happen. God bless you. In New Zealand Amen. too. Amen. Oh, Amen. In New Zealand too. Throughout the continent, man. They will talk the continent. <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, in Jesus' name. Yes. Oh, my goodness. God bless you. Amen. And we're trusting God Amen. for it. Amen. We don't know when, we don't know how, but we know that nothing is impossible for our God. And we're trusting that one day we will have Pastor Danny right here. In the Australia Pacific region, and that it is going to be a glorious time in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Okay, Hallelujah. our time is far spent, brothers and sisters, and we have much still planned. Amen. We have so much to do still, and we're going to be getting into it right now. And before we move on, I just want to ask how many of us here are subscribed to or following our YouTube page? And yes, I'm talking to you right now. Though, does anyone even know the name of the YouTube page that we use? Can anyone tell me? RCCG, yes it is. Okay, so the challenge for all of us is 
our content that we generate, for example, from the, um, the, the, the mentorship and from the, the speaking session, et cetera, will be on our YouTube page. Please go to YouTube as soon as you can. RCCG, yes, the, the link is in the chat right now. And I want us to subscribe to that page. Do not miss another word of what we're doing here. Another word of what we're doing in the YES seminars as we move forward. Subscribe so that you can go back, revisit these messages and really share it with your friends, share it with your family, your contacts, anyone who you think can really benefit from this. And the Lord will bless us as we do so. Amen. We're going now into the breakout sessions. After that wonderful, powerful word, we want to see now, okay, how can we practicalize the things that God has been calling us to do? How can we really step out of our comfort zone, step into the marketplace of influence and really be at the top of our game in our careers, in our hobbies, our interests, our professional endeavors? What is God calling us to do? And what can I do to maximize the anointing, the grace, to make the best use of all of that? And I know there are some talented people on this platform. And if you are here, you are in for a treat because just like we have in our previous sessions, we have our breakout sessions today. We're going into breakout rooms for 30 minutes. We have four great facilitators with us here today. And of course, many of us who would have um, benefited from the last session and also from the mentoring, we know, for example, we have Dr. Samuel Ekondayo, our purpose and career man of the half an hour. And I can tell you, if you missed that session on purpose, it is on the RCCGS channel. If you are still struggling to figure out what your purpose is, you're in the right place. And we have the right man for the job. God is here and we have much in store for you. We have also Pastor Bussola Martins, who is going to be talking to us about personal growth and development. If you are stuck in that area and you're wondering, okay, God, how can I move forward? What can I do to grow? How do I move from one stage to the other? Because if you're not growing, brothers brother and sisters, something is wrong, you know? And so as we go through our daily lives, we must be seeing the manifestation of the growth that God has called us to come into. We must be walking into one season after another and see that we are extending our reach. Our branches are reaching further than they were the day before, the year before. And so we have Dr. Sam, or Purpose Reaches in the House. We have Pastor Bustola Martins, or Personal Growth and Development Guru and Expert. And we have two additional speakers, two special people in the house today. And because these speakers are a bit more new to us, I'm going to give us a very quick rundown of who they are. And of course, you're seeing on your screen, first of all, we have LJ John. He is a year 12 student of Cherubuk Technology High School, but do not be fooled. We just saw how Samuel by his age was not limited to what God through, could do through him. And so we are here in the house and we have LJ and we're so happy to have LJ. And this young man, he started working on inventions at the age of 10 one zero what were you doing when you were 10 probably still playing with your belly button like i was right and this young man is currently the co-inventor and patent holder of interfloss the world's first combined interdental brush and dental floss and other interdental cleaning services he's currently working on another world-class robotic iot hands-free umbrella oh my god and he aspires to be a medical doctor and is a member of the RCCG Restoration Assembly. We are super happy to have LG with us today. And we are gonna be hearing much more about what he has prepared for us. Second, we have Matthias Ahizwa, CEO of OAA Study. This man has over 12 years of combined experience in small and medium-sized enterprises in emerging markets, mainly in the educational services, which is what I'm interested in, education, financing, education, marketing, and business development. Matthias, he has demonstrated experience in business startups and management and growth, and he has a master's of taxation in taxation and financial planning specialization from the University of New South Wales and a Bachelor of Commerce specializing in economics from Charles Darwin University. He completed a course in disruptive strategy with the Harvard Business School and is well-versed in innovation theories and practices. Matthias, 
firsthand experience in starting and running small businesses across countries and regions makes him confident, well-equipped, and in the right place today to help us people by or showing us a step-by-step -step approach in starting a business in Australia, Asia, and Africa. And hey, perhaps you're not in this region, but what he has to say, you must be able to take away something to apply to starting your own business, to growing your impact, and to maximizing your reach. And we are so happy to have all of our wonderful facilitators today to take us into our break room sessions. You will receive an invite on your screen right now. It is up to you to choose which of these sessions you want to go into. Amen. And I'm pretty sure you're going to be blessed anywhere you go. So choose wisely and enjoy. And we'll see you back here in 30 minutes. God bless you. going all right so all right you should be seeing your invite Yeah, hi. Hello. Hello, Matthias. Yes, Hello. thanks for connecting. Thanks for joining the breakout session. Thank You're welcome. You. Okay, so I believe you're in the right group. So this is our small business. Uh, if this is not the session you want to partake in, you can always let me know and we'll try to reassign you to a different um, breakout session. But at the end of the session, we'll also make available uh, the recording and the, the presentation as well will be made available. So you probably won't lose that. So you've, uh, some of you may know me personally and why some of you may not. And provide an introduction about myself. Uh, as I speak to you right now, I'm actually speaking with you right from Awoyaya in Ibejuleki, Lagos, uh, Nigeria. But I lived in Australia. I mean, I do business in Australia. Um, due to COVID, I'm in Nigeria um, for business as well. And, I'm staying in Nigeria, traveling across uh, Africa. Just got back from, from London um, four or five days ago. And I'm in the line of education. That's the sector where my business uh, has been growing in. And I do have interest in FinTech as well. So I do a bit of um, FinTech uh, investment. So I'm part of one or two businesses in Australia as well, apart from my existing business, OAA study, uh, we have the Yizwa Hub um, business. And for most of you who remit money back overseas, I'm also a shareholder in GDM money transfer. So I don't run the business directly, but I support the, the risk of infection. Because after all, he was already late that day and there was blood and coming from his gums and stress caused in order for him to have that better dental hygiene. And that ran the risk of infection as well. But I didn't know that at the time. And it just didn't seem to be right. 
So in what seemed to be a stroke of luck, but now I know is a seed of knowledge from God burst <laughs> forth. And I told my dad the words that started it all, it started it all, that there must be something that lets you do your flossing and use the inter dent dental brush at the same time, that there has to be a better way. And to these words, my dad replied, if something like that really does exist, I would be the first to use it. Mm. So from then he left for an interview, but before he left, he gave me an assignment to draw out the um, combination that I had mentioned to draw out the idea. And of course, at the time, it was just a way for my dad to keep me a little distracted for a while, something to entertain me for a few minutes while he left the house or on his way to work. And at the time, we didn't really take it seriously, especially me being a 10 year old. I, I was just doing it because my dad told me to. And because I thought, hey, it was something cool. I didn't really, it didn't really occur to me at the time that it could be something that I myself would work into. But that's one thing that when you are get going into, when you do have a creative idea, you especially do need to believe in yourself and know, trust in the fact that God will provide a way for you. Um, so anyways, at the time, we didn't know that um, it would evolve into what it was, it is now today. And, but, and we didn't even know that we've come and done the first step and we'd already come together and done a mini brainstorm and made the idea that would evolve into our very first combined invention. And though we didn't act on it sadly at the time, this would be probably the biggest step in our growth as inventors, apart from something that I'll tell you about much later on. Um, so yeah, after a few years, the idea kind of returned to us, kind of like a reminder for us to go ahead and get a, get along with it. And this time we acted immediately and we started working on several different ideas, um, different versions of the same idea, throwing around designs and plans until we had something that we thought could work. And during that process, the idea was always on me and my dad's mind with me and my dad often even texting each other drawings that we would do of it or ideas that we had in order to make the idea better. And we would have mock meetings where we would keep records of ideas that we discussed and brainstormed as we went through. After doing that, before we could further go ahead with anything, um, we had to meet up with a patent lawyer in order to protect the product when we take the idea to others. Um, when I did get there, I learned about two types of protection our project, project could have had access to, which was design registration which is the protection of an actual design of a product. And then there's just patenting, which is a protection of the function and how the product works, the idea and the concept. So after we finally decided to, um, on what type of protection we wanted to use, we ended up having to work alongside a professional industrial designer, which, um, helped us to better the model at the time as we were trying to make the idea better and every time changes were made we had to return to the patent lawyer to apply the changes and after all of that hard work we were practically ready for the first prototype and my father started flying down to china to get it sorted and made now at this time we did we we did have it in prayer but it was something when my mom finally came into it to join us with it, she made it something that we always, we made it like a central prayer point, a proper separate prayer session for it that led God to bring out the potential to guide us in this thing. And that's something that's very important because I can tell you now, if it wasn't for God guiding me here, I probably wouldn't have even, if all those years, 10, 10 um, six years ago, if God didn't have me come into that room at that moment when my dad was going to start bleeding, I would have missed the entire idea. So it's God that provides the opportunities and always remember that he's the provider before anything. So anyways, as I was saying, um, during all of this, we made sure that everyone we interacted with 
signed a non-disclosure agreement, which meant they weren't able to talk to anyone about it. And then during all of this, we continued to throw around ideas, gaining expert opinions and ideas from those who we closely trusted. And throughout this whole process, we constantly tried to grow and improve our idea in order to reach further heights with it and even um, started making more and more ideas on the side, writing them down, even if we weren't going to use them, because um, sometimes it's the bad ideas that end up having, um, helping, because everything counts, not just the good, and you never really should throw away the bad. So everything is, I guess, just part of the process. Now, during all of this as well, I did keep God as well as a central guidance during this because honestly we we aren't we weren't at the time we weren't inventors before we got into the inventor thing we were just normal people like everyone else and in fact probably we're still normal people but at the time we were directed to a man to a patent lawyer who was able to correctly help us save money as well with our patents and everything we were guided to people who would help us improve the project and it's just it, you can't say it's luck because god doesn't do luck he's been guiding us from the very start and that's mm -hmm. something very important mm -hmm. so anyways that's that's pretty much a summary of how i got to this point and if anyone has any questions about building creativity um uh, patents, so and so. Um, if you want to ask any questions now, maybe just put your hand up or just unmute and shoot me a question. my first line what is my first line of action when my dad gave me the assignment when my f dad first gave me the assignment the assignment initially was to just draw the um the interdental brush and dental floss now i was 10 at the time so my it wasn't something that i thought too deeply into at first and since he was going to work i was left by myself but the first thing i did was brainstorm and that's a very important thing because um there's so many options you can be provided with now for me to have that paper you just it's not something that you just say i draw one thing and it's it you have a collection of ideas you build up with it you see oh this one looks nice maybe this this item might have something at two ends that looks nice but how what if i do it like this and I just brainstormed, built it up before my dad came home. And then I showed him the drawings pretty much that I had, the final ones. But I think for not only my invention, but for anything, um, it's always good for you to settle in and have some time to think thoroughly about what? Mm -hmm. yeah, what you're going to do with it. And not just for you to think about it, but even as you're making a decision of what choices to make, to put it in prayer, because I remember my mom, she did put it in prayer a lot when it, anytime it came up, anytime we had to make a decision, because it's those small decisions in the end that count for success. Mm. So that the first line of action I made was, I guess, to bring out the ideas, to brainstorm. Any other questions? One thing I do want to add to everything I've said so far, sorry if anyone has any questions, please just shoot them in the chat while um, I don't mind, um, is um, creativity is a very 
it's something that you don't always it doesn't come easily i would say and one thing i wanted to do i do want to say to highlight is when you do get into a creative process because it's not something that if God gives you an idea or a gift, it's not something that you just leave in your mind and you risk um, losing it. It's something you have to jot down, write down to um, keep track of because God's, God's ideas aren't something that you want to just leave lying around. There's something you should um, have compiled with you. And that's something very important because there's so many times that, um, not with Interfloss, but let's say even for in school, maybe if I wanted to do an assignment, if I have an idea and I just leave it in my mind thinking that I'll remember it, you maybe even if you do remember it, you might not keep all the details. Um, someone asked me any internet search or YouTube videos. Um, if you search um, interfloss.com, that should come up because I do have that website or search Interfloss in general, and there are some, there are several YouTube videos. I'm not sure um, if I, I could put the link in the chat maybe. Um, there's several YouTube videos. Um, if you just search Interfloss on YouTube, you should be able to find them. Um, but there's also the Interfloss website, which you can check, which we also did have to hire someone and make them sign a non-disclosure agreement and all of that in order to create those things. Um, one thing though, another thing to add is, um, it does take a lot of resources for you to do, to create things and all of that. And one thing I recommend for that specifically is put it in God's hand for your resources not to be wasted and for you to be prepared before you go in because god god doesn't want you to just storm in unarmed the same way he equip, equips us with the sword of the spirit with the armor of god he wants us to be equipped for anything we go into so one thing i do recommend is to not just rush into things um does anyone else have a question <laughs> Amen. I I do have quite a few newer ideas. Um, the thing is, um, some of them I may not specifically be able to touch on them yet because um, you do need a patent in order for it to be secure and safe. But one idea that I do have that is in the works is um, a self-functioning um, umbrella, hands-free umbrella. And this one is, well, currently we're, fun we're working on, me and my dad together, we're working on an umbrella that will allow for um, you to, for it to operate on its own with your hands being free, obviously. And that's one thing that's on the works. Let's see. Um, we also have another thing in the works as well, which is, I'm not... I'm not able to touch on that one too much, but it's um, what I can say is it is a kind of new recreation of a, mu a musical instrument that we have back home. And it's kind of something to reintroduce it into, well, I guess, um, more Western areas, Australia, Europe, that kind of thing to expand it. But uh, I don't think there's many other ideas I can necessarily touch on right now due to not having the proper patents for it yet or not having the um oh the patents being quite sensitive god oh, bless you amen mm -hmm. oh well definitely um the word of God, the word of God, um, God himself, I do feel provided me with the ideas. But one thing I did notice is it's not just the ideas God provided for me and my dad. Because I can tell you now there were a lot of times when things got tough. Some people, um, I remember there was one time I was speaking with a specific um, professional 
And that day I actually, I didn't cry in front of him, but when I got in the car, I cried because it was quite harsh how he did it. But um, like my mom, my mom's always been there to support us and everything. And anytime there's doubt in my heart, she has a word to provide, you know, to, to, to encourage me. And it's always good to know that um, God has um, my back. The word of God has been a quite, quite the big, even more motivation than even my dad and mom being there because after all, God is almighty. He has no limits. Um, someone asked me, how much does it cost to patent an idea, um, legal fees, et cetera? Um, um, like I said, I'm not exactly an expert on patents, but um, I can drop my email on the chat for so I can follow up with that and maybe link you a patent um, with my patent lawyer if wanted. But I do know that it does actually cost, cost quite a large amount for you to get a patent, which is why I was saying um, that you should be prepared because um it is a big commitment for you to make to have a patent and it is something that um in most cases may need to be renewed over time so um is it, would you like me to drop my um email in the chat Okay, yep. Yeah. I'll probably drop my the official um maybe my dad's email because that one will be much more accessible. Um, yes, yeah, so, um, when I did get a patent, we did, um, at first it actually wasn't a global patent, but we did move on to get a global patent afterwards. Um, let me just drop my dad's email in the chat. Okay, someone asked, how do you generate ideas? Well, for me to generate ideas with me and my dad, it's sort of a process. Firstly, when you're trying to create something, you aren't really just creating anything, you're creating something to solve a problem. So the first step in my create, me and my dad's creative process for anything is, what's the problem you're trying to solve. Before you think of um, how you want to solve it, it's what are you going to solve step by step. And that the same way with Interfloss, how I saw the problem of my dad spending time flossing and everything and the bleeding before the idea came and we figured out how to fix it is what's the problem you want to solve. And then the next step is, it seems to be a pretty broad step, but it's something that I think is a requirement for any any growth in an idea is brainstorm. Don't just settle for one idea. That um, like for Interfloss, we had several ideas that um, such as a double-headed um, floss um, interdental brush with a string attached, so and so, so on, so forth. And what we did find is as we went through the ideas, we see what works, what didn't work. And like one of the problems we came up, we came across is um, when you do have something like this, um, your teeth come at different angles, right? And how do we get around that? And that's when we came up with the idea for a rotary head, which surprisingly, it doesn't seem like many other people have that in place, especially for an, 
and especially since we are the first combined into dental and dental um floss um inventing invention um that definitely was something that was a first and was definitely much more helpful in the end since we had a solid stick so um after brainstorming we kind of narrow it down test um ideas gather um insight from other people one thing i must say though is you must always be um have some form of protection even if it's not a plate pay pay even if it's not a patent, such as a non-disclosure agreement to stop people talking about it. Um, and then, yeah, I think that's a pretty basic breakdown of my creative process. That step one, find a pro uh, the problem. Step two, um, brainstorm solutions. And then step three, um, gather insight from others. But at the same time, always remember that throughout each and every one of those steps, you have to put it in God's hands. Like if you go into your brainstorm step, you have so many options, isn't it? But for you to choose the right option, to select the right things out of all your choices, it's only God that can that can take you to the, towards the right one. Um, what am I studying now? So in school, I'm studying biology, physics, chemistry, um, advanced mathematics, advanced English, and um, visual arts on the side for something a little fun, because I want to go into medicine after um, after school. I'm actually still in school. I'm in year 12, so um, mm -hmm. I'm still doing those subjects. And then once I pass the HSC, I'm going for medicine straight. So that's the plan, yeah. Um, Ah, uh, amen, amen, sir. Um, honestly, it's only God that can provide, isn't it? If 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 God wasn't there, if I hadn't always been able to say yes to God, to hear Him and be able to say yes to the input He gave gives to me, I wouldn't have been able to make it this far. My dad wouldn't have been able to guide me this far. We wouldn't. It's only God by His grace. It's God. God bless you. <laughs> Amen. And you too. Any more questions? Okay. So, I said, just as of us in the uh, room, pray for our brother. God will preserve him. Nothing will distract him. Nothing Amen. will derail him. Amen. Uh, you know, like I said in my chat, God will give him greater divine ideas that will shake the world in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> so let's pray for our brother and those of us in the room. Father, thank you for your son. Thank you for even the talk we had earlier that at the tender age, somebody began to hear God and it became great for God in his generation. Thank you, Lord, for inspiring your son. A little, what appears like a little problem that he observed with his dad led to thinking, brainstorming, and receiving divine ideas from you. We are grateful to you for a receptive mind and a seen eye and an understanding spirit, which you've made to bring a product out of. Thank you for greater ideas that are already standing up in me by your spirit. Thank you for parents who knew you, who can also support in prayers. Thank you for divine guidance. Thank you for that for help. Pray that we use them as part of contact with all young ones, even of his age, that they will not take what you are bringing to their attention, what you are bringing to their heart, what you are showing them in their dreams or granted. That will give us the grace to begin to document your dealings with us so that when the need arises, these things will become a reality in the name of Jesus. Please, Lord, keep your son intact, body, soul, and spirit. In his studies, continue to inspire him. And even as he says he wants to read medicine, Father, you make way for him and become great for you in the name of Jesus. Father, we're grateful. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Which is your parents, you know, your mom and dad. <laughs> too. I actually think they might be uh are they in here? Eh, uh, okay, uh, great. So. <laughs> I don't think they're in this specific one. Maybe they went to check out the other ones because they already know <laughs> what I'm going to say. <laughs> great. Um, okay. 
marketing, sales, distribution, licensing of my product. Okay, well, um, in terms of uh, uh, marketing, marketing, we had a few options, actually. First option, first thing we did try out was um, YouTube ads, just small short ads, as well as um, Instagram links, Facebook links, those kinds of things, all with small short videos. Mostly just introducing me and the idea. Um, we after that we had a website to link it up to because um, when, because we also wanted to have something to later on sell the product on. So we had that set up. Um, for distribution, we set up stuff on Amazon. We had. What was it? Teddy White Pharmacy. We got into a pharmacy for um. It's not not no longer in Teddy White Pharmacy for the time being, just for um a short amount of time because at at the time we did initially do it, um. We our set our marketing wasn't exactly the best and we were bottom shelf, which was something that we now have to consider when we do go back into stores but um we did get into a pharmacy which would have been well and good if we just went into a well-known pharmacy with at the top shelf um amazon as well it's still on amazon to this day um that was distribution what else um oh I think breakout rooms are about to close actually. Yeah. How do you manage your, your royalties? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't um when it comes to managing things, honestly, I'm not really dad. <laughs> yeah, my dad helps me because I'm still in school, so that's right. So um, that you've not been distracted, yes. That, yeah, that's so <laughs> so it's my dad who helps me with all of those things, especially since yeah. I'm not exactly the biggest expert with all of that. Yes, yeah. I do what I know how to do and what God has provided are you the me. First, are you the day. first child in the family? Yeah, first child. Okay. Yeah. Then your yeah. junior, your junior ones are they excited and they do want to yeah yeah okay, they, good. they they they've all in fact some of them even wanted to start trying to get into inventions as well <laughs> yeah Amen. welcome back everyone we yes. are so happy that you have stuck around with us and i pray that you would have benefited greatly from the breakout room that you chose to slip into Amen. And if you did, I just want you to put it in the chat right now. I'm inspired. I am blessed. I got something. Yes. Amen. Yes. So right now, what we're going to be doing very quickly is we're going to be giving each of the facilitators just about a minute and a second to give us a quick summary of what you covered in your session so that everybody can have a broad general idea of what they missed. And also because we know, of course, that the recordings will be made available. So just to give us a little teaser of what you got up to in your own groups and what others have to look forward to when they go in. And I'll start with you, Dr. Sam. Please tell us what you talked about in purpose and career. Thank you, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, so one minute, right? Okay, real quickly. Um, we, we talked about um, why it is important to discover the purpose of God for our lives. And we said purpose has a lot to do with who we are becoming more than what we are to do. Many people think that purpose is just all about what we are to do. Uh, and But that's a very dangerous misconception. Mm -hmm. uh, your purpose is not singing. Your purpose is not writing. Your purpose is not cooking. Your purpose is the why behind that cooking. Behind that's right. Singing. Why are you called to sing? Why are you called to write? The why behind. That's so important. And we ended up by saying, your purpose is not obvious. Even the devil doesn't know your purpose. We, we, we saw that in First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 to 10. Uh, it's only the Spirit of God that can reveal the purpose of God to us. And we that's right. During the mentorship session, by the grace of God, the Holy Spirit will guide us on how to get clarity about the purpose of God for our lives so that we're not just um, walking blindly on the surface of the earth, wasting time. Amen. 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 Thank you so very much, Dr. Sam. The Lord bless you, sir. Next on my screen, we have Bro LJ. 
You're up next, sir, in a minute and a single second. Please give us a quick summary of what you got up to in your groups on creativity and innovation. Um, so in our session, we mostly went over um, the creative process, um, how to um, build up your creativity with that. Um, um, I went over the story of how I got to where I was, um, how God can guide your creative process and help influence it to go down the right process. And then I also lightly touched on the topic of patents and innovation. Awesome. And did you have many questions? <laughs> yeah, a lot. I had a lot of questions. Yeah. A lot okay. of them, all of them were answered. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, done. Oh, this is... oh wait, don't, 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 don't. <laughs> Thank you so much. Pastor Martin, you are next on my screen, man. Please give us a one minute and a second rundown of what you got up to in personal growth and growth. I heard you preaching up a storm in there, so I know that there was fire falling in that place. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Thank you, Pastor Charles. So we just had um, a, a talk on pillars of growth. Um, this was actually the word God gave me for the session. Four pillars. There are so many four uh, pillars, actually, but I shared four of them. The first one is the promise. You must find a promise of your growth from the scriptures because the picture of your future is in the scripture. So you must find that word. Number two is that your pain, every growth process will go through pain and you must never run away from your pain your pain is your gold your pain births your next level we all go through pain but we get stopped from our purpose from our um, process from our growth process when it gets to this pain area now your pain is a resistant but when you resist your resistance then you grow. And number three is patience. The Bible talks about Jesus being patient, even unto the point of death. He went through pain and he was patient. Why? For the glory that was set ahead. So if you want to get to the glory of your growth, there must be patient. The Bible says that we learn through obedience and obedience, of course, is painful. But when you go through it with patience, you get to the next level. And overall, next level is that you get to your point of promotion. The Bible says, wherefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name that's Amen. above every other name on top of all he went through. David went through all that. And yet eventually he became an eternal excellency. The Bible says in Isaiah, oh, I'm not preaching here, sorry. That's all. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pastor Martin. And for those of you who have found yourself being pulled in by those words, Go to RCCG, yes, and you will see what this wonderful woman of God has done in, in her mentorship sessions on personal growth and development. Do not miss it. Thank you so very much, Pastor. Right, Matthias, please tell us, sir, I was in your session on small business. In a minute yes. and a single second, tell us what the summary of your discussion was, please. Yes, thank you, Charles. Uh, the internet was not the best, and, but I was able to inspire uh, people, I believe, about the successful small businesses out there uh, in Nigeria, in Australia, uh, businesses that started small and now they are uh, multinational uh, businesses, bigger than traditional business. And I talked about how technology could help you uh, survive as a small business. Mm -hmm. uh, the myth of saying if you're a small business, when you're sick, uh, no one is there to run the business. But technology has actually changed that myth and so encouraging people to look at businesses that can be aided with, with technology. And I shared my own experience with, with a business. And we touched briefly on the tax, uh, the business structure. And I was just diving into um, the sole trading business uh, structure when it comes to personal liabilities and the taxation implication and how to also reduce tax in, in small business the benefits of you running a small business. So we did not go deep in other structure, but the sole trader structure can still help if you're looking at a small business. Then we have the company, the trust, the partnership. And so those are the various um, structures when it comes to business. So you can always get most of this information online or speak to your um, tax accountant. Mm -hmm. um, but in any form, whatever you want to do, just start small, start as a sole trader it can also help you in reducing your personal income tax. Uh, I think uh, if I've gone above a minute, so I will end that there. Thank you. 
You're welcome, Sarah. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Thanks to everyone of our very able facilities. We are blessed to have you here and the Lord bless you richly. Amen. You will not miss your own blessing, even as you impart and so into the lives of God's people. God will also give into yours. Amen. And we are wrapping up. We are almost out of here. This is the spillover section. So for the next few minutes, I just want to bring on Dr. Boriri. Great man with a hand to do the work of the Lord. And oh my God, what a joy to work with this man of God. Sir, you are here to give us a rundown on a very special event and to also poll us on what our experience has been and then to bring in the person who's going to be doing our closing prayers. Take it away. Wow. Thank you so much, Charles. Thank you for being a wonderful host. Uh, I apologize to everyone that we've gone a bit beyond um, our, our planned time. But I hope you've gotten a lot of value from this um, meeting. Um, for some of you, I'm sure you'd have been surprised to see um, Pastor Daniel Rato in Bow Ministry today. Um, we had initially um, hoped to have Pastor Pujo Uyemade, uh, but unfortunately could not make it. But as God will have it, God had prepared a vessel on two days' notice. Two days' notice. In fact, mm -hmm. maybe even less than two days' notice. So Pastor Dami was only called about two days ago. He took it up. And um, he's, he was preaching where he was, his local time would have been 2.30 uh, a.m. Mm -hmm. So, he, 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 you know, so that's a re really huge sacrifice. Um, for, I'm sure he's back on his bed sleeping now. Um, <laughs> but I, but uh, we'll contact him to, to extend our thanks to him again. So thank you so much uh, for being here. And I hope you've been getting value. Uh, RCCGES is a movement. This is more than just a quarterly program. This is a movement. And if you stay with us and you connect with us, you're going to get lots and lots of value. All right. This is just, we're just warming up. 2022 is going to be a bigger, bigger year for us. Right? This, is the last, this is the last edition for this year. We've only had two editions this year. Um, we're trusting God that we're going to have a bigger number next year. You see, you can't come for this. Look at what happened today. You can't come for the next session in February. The next session is in February. You can't come for that one and not, I remain the same. Let me just let you know. Let me just release this to you. That next edition, all right, one of the guests that we have is one of the sons of Pastor Adeboe. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One of our guest ministers. So you can't afford, it's going to be special. It's absolutely going to be special in February, okay? We're going to release all the, the, the dates and all that to you. So please, you have to, we need you to spread the word. We need you to, all the people in your parish, there are lots and lots of people in your churches who are not here. And even if you're not a member of RCCG, wherever you're from, there are a lot of people around you that will be blessed by this. I know we're not distributing money here. We're not distributing, we're giving you more than that we're giving you something that will help you destiny help yes. yourself and all round look at the, the the sessions we've had today the breakout sessions you have got to make advantage take advantage of this and spread the word so we'd like you to go to rccgs and subscribe okay if you go to rccgs merely we finish this program you, what you would see there you would see a lot of our former um uh, videos we've done sort of other programs uh, mentorship programs in fact you would see um different talks by different speakers uh, uh over the last few months okay you can't afford you can see here uh, dr samia or you know stream tree mentorship relationship you know is also here you know my talk on leadership is here the uh, personal growth um, pastor martins let's click on that let's even see you'll see her spitting out fire i'm not sure that you can see on your on your screen there but okay but you can't afford to miss this okay you can't afford to miss this laws of growth can you see that laws of growth laws of growth all of these content are available they are available on youtube today's program all the breakout sessions if you missed any they'll be there all right so subscribe to this channel all right when we started we were 19 we're 31 subscribers now we should be not less than 100 subscribers at the end of this program subscribe to that channel you will find value there and then before i go i also want to invite you to a program a program that will be starting next week sunday and this program is going to be really really amazing this program is a program that's been put up by our father in the lord Pastor Abraham Astro. Pastor Astro will be turning 70 on the 11th of January, 2022. 
in order to celebrate his birthday, is put together an amazing program that will bless your life. Now, I'm going to play a short clip. All right. I just want you to watch this clip. It's even not a finished product, but I hope it would sort of capture the whole essence of the program. So just watch this clip and then I will say one or two words and we'll close. Yes, so where Pastor Astrop is putting together this amazing program, and I want to encourage you to attend. It's going to be a great, great program. It's going to bless your life. It's conversation with the fathers, conversation with the fathers. Five weeks of impartation, five weeks of impartation. I can see there, most of the people there are people that he knows personally, people that he's dealt with, and they'll be talking about different aspects of leadership, all right? It's going to start next week, Saturday at 6, 7 p.m. Sydney time. That's 9 a.m. Uh, West African time. 7 p.m. Sydney time will be launching with the mandate. So each week there will be a theme and it's going to be a conversation, a discussion around different topics that will bless your life. So please, I want to encourage you, if you want to be a part of this program, register at abramastrop.com. And when you register, Daddy Astrop has got a free gift for you. You're going to get a free ebook. So if you want a free book today, go to abramastrop.com, click on the register button, you will get a link for to download a book that book will bless your life share the link with all your friends and invite them your family members let them um, come for this program it's going to be a big blessing the program will also be streamed on rccgs if you subscribe to the channel and turn on the no notification button you will receive a notification about this event and you will be able to attend so i hope that um, you know you're there and that this program blesses your life once again thank you for being a part of yes two we're going to be coming strong next february by the grace of god and we're going to be having our youth convention next year as well whoa 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 in june so we're going to be having yes three in february and then our youth convention in june that's going to be a massive event and i'm already thinking of having pastor dami again what do you think i'm already thinking of pastor dami youth convention it's going to be amazing all right so guys thank you so much Charles. i'll leave it up to you god bless Thank you, sir. Okay, so now we are going to launch a very quick poll and we just want to very quick feedback in a matter of seconds. Amen. So you should see the poll information popping up on your screen any minute now. And just in case that doesn't happen, we'll get the poll out of you some other way. Amen. Um, so Dr. Nee, if you're still with me, um, perhaps you could put that up for us. I think there's an issue with that. We'll, we'll have to do that later. Okay. All right. No problem. All right. So we have come to the end of our program, brothers and sisters. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for connecting with us from all over the world. I know um, that people are indeed, you know, logged in from all walks of life, from some of the furthest corners of the earth. My own cousin is on here from Jamaica. Hi, cousin. Thank you so very much for connecting um, with us. And I know it is, you know, getting pretty late there in the Caribbean. And for everyone who's connecting out of the wonderful African continent and here in the Australia Pacific region from our small islands and all nations, God is our one big father and we are all joined to him. Amen. And so what we're going to do right now is to invite our bro Gideon Okoye, who is going to be wrapping us up in prayer and then we'll put on some chill, you know, feel good. God's good. God's got us more grace music to take us out. Amen. Bless you. Bring it in. You are welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank for you, Jesus. Thank you for the privilege of having this meeting. 
as has been truly declared, one generation shall praise your work to the next mm -hmm. generation. Uh, we thank you for empowering us today. Thank you for quickening us, for sending your word, for not leaving us without a witness. We give you glory. We give you praise. Thank you for all the facilitators that, Lord, you have used to empower us today. Father, we pray, Lord, that he, they that have watered, they will be watered themselves. Amen. And the river also will be made fat in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Father, we just want to say yes to your will. Amen. We want to say yes to your way. Amen. We want to say yes to everything Amen. you have spoken to us concerning our careers. Amen. concerning our creativity, concerning Amen. our purposes, and concerning Amen. our personal growth Amen. in the name of Jesus. We are, we, we are here, Lord, declaring yes, yes to your will, yes to your way in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that even as we gather subsequently, Lord, we pray that the fruits Amen. of this meeting will become evident in the lives of every attendee in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your name be glory. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. In Jesus' Amen. name we pray. Amen. 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 Bless you. Thank you so much, everyone. God bless Amen. us. God bless Thank you, you all. Really, and the Lord bless you. And Amen. God bless you, everyone. This is a wrap for Yes 2. We will see you back here in February, where Amen. we are going to be having Yes 3. And I pray that by that time, your answer will be a stronger yes. God bless you. Thank you. As a has for me. And thank you everyone for bless you, joining us. Thank bless you, you for Thank you for spreading the word.
dead. <laughs> Lord bless you, everyone. Take care. Amen. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Bless you. And enjoy a wonderful service in church tomorrow. If you're in the region where tomorrow is Sunday. God bless Amen. you. Yep.